Welcome to the latest edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. Lance Meadow with you as we are continuing to break down the Giants 2022 draft class. And the Giants had two fourth round picks with the 114th overall selection. They took Iowa safety Dane Belton. And to get more into Belton and what he'll bring to New York, we are now joined by his head man for the last three seasons, the head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes, none other than Kirk Ferentz. Coach, you got Lance Meadow here. Thanks so much for joining us. Greatly appreciate the time. Let's start off with Dane Belton, who really was one of the most versatile players, it seemed, that you had on the defensive side of the ball. From what I understand, he played the cash position. So what was the cash position, and why was he such a good fit for that? Well, good to be with you, Lance, first of all. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, the cash position uh, is aptly named after uh, Dane joining our team. We, we've... Uh, you know, like a lot of teams in college football, college football has kind of evolved and we're seeing a lot of three wide, four wide uh, formations and our hash marks are a little bit different uh, than in the pro game. So uh, the guy that plays out to the field, you know, a lot of people put three receivers to the field and uh, we've had uh, going back 20 years ago, bigger, bigger type players playing out there. LeVar Woods played in the NFL for about six, seven, eight years and uh, he was a bigger, more physical type player. Uh, more accustomed to playing tight ends. And then, you know, the last 10 years or so, it's kind of evolved where we've been substituting players. And uh, Dane gave us a guy that could uh, actually play both. He could play up over a tight end. We don't want to do it, uh, you know, frequently, but uh, he had that ability. Uh, but he also could play out in coverage and, and play out in space and did a great job for us. So he's a really, really versatile guy. And uh, not only versatile from a physical standpoint, but also mentally. And uh, I think probably the thing, you know, it makes him stand out a little bit over the players we've had in 23 years. And then the other part, uh, right from his freshman year, really, really adept and versatile mentally, too. He you know, had a, a maturity that was a little bit uh, unexpected for a first year player and just has done a great job for us for three years. Well, I'm glad you brought up the intellect component, because when Dane spoke to the New York media and he was asked about one drops out about his skill set, he actually brought up what you just mentioned. He said, the mental side of the game is what I flourish with for a position like that. And given his versatility coach, why is perhaps not just the X's and O's so important in order to be able to excel and succeed? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to know. And uh, the more you do know, the better chance you have of being successful. And I think that's one thing historically, uh, our defensive guys have done a great job. Phil Parker has been with us all 23 years and was our secondary coach. Uh, uh, the first part of his career still is. Uh, assume the coordinator job in 2012 and it's done a wonderful job uh, we've played pretty good defense now for a couple of decades and a uh, big part of that is, is having players that are smart back there you think about guys like Micah Hyde Desmond King you know we've been really lucky to have some good guys in the back end and not, not only good players but really cerebral players um, you know Sean Consign name a bunch of guys but you know Dane fits that mold and, and again I think the thing that was unusual about him uh, you know, he was like that as a first year player. He, uh, didn't learn it here. He just came in, just was really curious about the, the mental aspect. And I think it's true at every position, certainly in the secondary, you know, to, uh, you know, be honed in on formations, know what plays, you know, people like to run, you know, patterns, those types of things, things they're going to see from different looks. Uh, Dane was good at that from an early age. Coach, from what I understand, Amani Hooker, who didn't cross paths with him at Iowa, but was his predecessor at that position, who has since been drafted by the Tennessee Titans, just finished up his third season. Dane had mentioned that he leaned on him a little to get a better feel for the position. How much did Amani having that spot in 2018 make for a smooth transition for Dane to be thrown right into that? You know, we've been lucky. Amani was here. Uh, Geno Stone is with the Ravens. So... Uh, again, a lot of guys that have played, you know, especially the inter interior part there, uh, the safety positions. So Amani was a great mentor for him, certainly, and uh, a really good teammate. And, uh, yeah, I think it always helps. It's uh, That's part of being a winning team is having older guys, and that's one thing. I go back to the 80s. I was an assistant here. Came here in 1981. I was fascinated with the older guys, how good they were with younger guys. Uh, so I'd love to say it's a tradition we started, but it, it started long ago. Uh, guys like Andre Tip, I'm going way back, 81. Just how good they were with, with younger players. It's kind of been a tradition here. And I know Monty was really helpful with Dane. And, you know, that's what you hope to see. And, and Dane's been the same way with younger players that are, you know, starting to rise up the ranks now with us. From a statistical standpoint, I think the one thing that jumps off the page from his performance this past season is the five interceptions 
which was second in the Big Ten, and all five of them actually came this past season. What do you attribute to why he was able to be so opportunistic in 2021? Our, our entire defense did a great job last year, uh, you know, in the back end, especially the secondary guys. Uh, they got their hands on a lot of balls. But again, I think a lot of that goes back to, you know, there's no, no substitute for experience, but experience is only good if you put it to use. And uh, Dane certainly has done that. Again, the preparation you do during the course of the week. And then, you know, you've got to have a, have a, a fair set of skills athletically, too, to be, to be a good player, uh, you know, major college football and certainly in the NFL. But I, th I think, again, that mental part, it's just a, it's a huge uh, component at any level of football. And the guys that better understand that tend to be the ones that, uh, you know, play a little bit better and they have longer careers. When it comes to a versatile player like Dane, coach, I think the big question for defensive coordinators in the NFL and Wink Martindale is now the new Giants D.C., how do you utilize them? Do you want to overwhelm them right away or do you want to maybe focus on one element? As he makes the transition, where do you think is a very strong starting point perhaps for him based on his skill set? Well, I'm, I'm sure I know Wink's an outstanding coach and has had great success in the National Football League. And uh, based on my time in the NFL, you know, you throw what you can at players and, you know, find out what they can do and what they're capable of doing. And that's part of being a successful coach is understanding, you know, what, what players uh, do best uh, and trying to accent, I think, uh, their, their, their strengths. And then also, you know, trying to keep them out of positions where they might get com compromised and, I'm certainly not going to pretend I, I have uh, the expertise or knowledge to tell anybody there what, what to do with Dane, but they'll, they'll figure that out real quickly. The thing I think they, they will find and uh, probably uh, sense this before they drafted Dane is he's going to work really hard. And it's as simple as that sounds. I mean, just showing up on time or preferably early with a good attitude and a good work ethic, that goes a long way, I think, in anything you do. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of guys have long, successful careers in the NFL at all positions. And, I think that's it's one of the attributes uh, our best players have carried with them to the National Football League. And, you know, you just don't take anything for granted. Realize you got to prove yourself every day. That's what sports are all about. And that's a great thing about sports. And uh, I think Dane certainly has, has embodied those traits for three years with us. And, you know, we're, we're sorry to see him leave, but we're also excited to see him start a new chapter. And it's kind of like being a parent. You know, your, your kids, sometimes they got to leave the house. And that's, uh, that's how it's supposed to work at some point. So I, I really am confident Dane's going to do a great job and represent the Giants in a fantastic way. You eventually have to let them spread their wings, as you can attest to as both a parent and a coach. But I think if there's one thing that's notable when you talk about traits with respect to Wink Martindale's defensive scheme is he's very blitz happy. He likes to get after the quarterback. And the fact that, as you were talking about earlier, Coach, Belton has that versatility. And you also exposed him to the slot. How much of a good fit do you think he would be if they want to have him take on a role in getting after the quarterback or playing close to the line of scrimmage? I think he can do that, and he certainly can uh, tackle a quarterback if he needs to, you know, if I'm blitz, that type of thing. Uh, I thought you were going to ask about, you know, covering a guy like Tyree Kill. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many draft meetings I sat in where we asked, you know, can this tight end block Reggie White? The answer is no, no matter who the guy is. So, uh, you know, again, that's part of coaching, just the matchups that you can get and that type of thing. But, uh, yeah, Dane's a really versatile guy. And uh, like I said, I think that's, that's really where he and, and players like Amani, but Dane, Dane especially uh, enabled us to use him a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit more mul in a multiple fashion uh, than maybe some players in the past just because he could play uh, up in, on the line and, and near the line but also do well in the back end, you know, and deeper coverage, those types of things as well. So, you know, he's just a really versatile player. Uh, and again, I think the, the, the mental part is really, you know, to me what differentiates players in a lot of realms. And, and Dane certainly got that component on, uh, in addition to a good skill set. Well, on a related note to what you're talking about, it reminds me really, Coach, of how the game has evolved. And I think you've seen it on the collegiate level because when we talk about the Tyreek Hills and – tight ends that are essentially pseudo wide receivers. It seems as if there's more of an emphasis on a player like Dane Belton, who you can feel confident in putting out on the field and matching up in a variety of spots or else offenses are going to take advantage of players who just don't have that skill set. essentially. Yeah, there's just a lot of phenomenal players and especially in the NFL, obviously. So, you know, it's a passing league. So, yeah, if you can't cover and if you can't disrupt the, the guy throwing the football, you're going to have it's going to be a tough day for you. And um, so I think, yeah, I think that's probably one of the things that the Giants saw in Dana's versatility and uh, ability to do a lot of things. 
And, and on top of it, he's just a great young guy. And he's got a great attitude. He's just uh, the kind of guy you love seeing coming down the hall. Uh, it's great to be in the team team environment with him. It's great to be with him in any environment, quite frankly. Great family. So, you know, to me, that's that's part of building a championship team, too, is you want championship-level people. And Dane certainly is, uh, you know, right up there in the top percentage of guys we've had. And also, when you take a player in the fourth round, I think it would be the icing on the cake if they can make contributions relatively early in their career. And sometimes, as you know, the best way to get on the field early may not necessarily be on the offensive or defensive side, but on special teams. How much did you expose him to that facet? And why do you think his skill set on defense plays very nicely into special teams? Yeah, typically, you know, at least historically, I think in the NFL and certainly with us as well, uh, our best special teams guys are the uh, safeties, linebackers, uh, a couple defensive linemen on occasion, that type of deal. Uh, tight ends used to be a little bit more prominent. Uh, you know, we've gone to a college spread punt formation now taking advantage of the rules. So we tend to, uh, you know, get more, more linebacker uh, DB type guys on there. And that's, that's the first thing Dane did with us uh, as of most of the good players we've talked about that have come through here, same thing. But then as they get older in their careers, you know, the balancing act is, you know, how many, um, how many reps do we want to let them have on special teams? We try to be a little bit, um, you know, uh, careful how we dispense those. And then also it gives us an opportunity maybe to get younger Danes, you know, the younger guys coming in involved too, but in the critical areas, Dane did a great job. And that, that's where we used him uh, as a veteran player. But uh, he's, I think he's capable in all four phases of being a really, uh, you know, really, really valuable contributor in sp on special teams. Coach, I'm glad you used the term critical areas and critical parts of the game because we talked about his versatility. We talked about his defensive statistical output. The other thing that I don't think gets a lot of notoriety is, if I have these numbers correct, he had no penalties in 2021 and just two in his career. And I'm sure that brings smiles to somebody like yourself because you certainly don't want to see the flags. but how much is that a reflection of your trust in him and his smarts in understanding the fundamentals of what it takes, despite the fact that you moved him around so much? Yeah, it's a little bit like the topic of, you know, we, we as a secondary got our hands on a lot of balls last year. And then same thing there. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I don't think you want to, at least I've told our team, we don't want to lead the league and leave fewest penalties. Uh, probably means we're not a very aggressive football team, but at the same time, what you want to, uh, you, you just can't grab, you know, you can't grab guys. That means you're lazier. You got poor technique. And, and then those judgment uh, penalties are just, you know, they kill you. They just, it's like walking a guy in the ninth inning. So I think our guys understand that. And Dane, Dane's done a great job. Yeah, he plays clean football. Uh, but again, I, it all goes back to his attitude, his, his understanding of the game and fundamentals, what good fundamentals are. Yeah, and then, you know, it takes a certain amount of ability and, and mental awareness to be, to be good that way. And, uh, you know, I think good defenses, you know, tend to be pretty, pretty penalty free. You know, you're going to have some aggressive plays and that's, that's part of football. Uh, again, you want to be careful about tempering that too much, but uh, the dumb penalties, those kinds of things, you know, they're, or lazy penalties. Those are, you know, they're really hard to uh, expect to win consistently. If you're a team that does a lot of that and, and Dane fully understands that and appreciates that. Well, one of the players he's already been tested against, Coach, and he's going to go up against him even more in practice, and I'm curious your perspective, is Wondell Robinson from Kentucky, who the Giants selected in the second round. I'm not trying to pour salt in your wounds because I know that was your most recent <laughs> opponent in the Citrus Bowl game, and he had quite the performance. But I'm always interested to get the perspective of somebody who hasn't necessarily coached that player. What jumped out to you about Robinson as you were preparing for him? Because the one thing Belton said was he'll always remember his shiftiness. And you also went up against him when he was at Nebraska as well. I was going to say, we saw him at Nebraska and then he uh, uh, ends up at Kentucky. And uh, ironically, the quarterback, uh, Kentucky, came from Penn State. So a little bit of a Big Ten theme there. But uh, yeah, the play, play that sticks out in my mind as you're describing, uh, you know, that player is the play he made in the uh, two-minute drill. Uh, that broke our backs, basically. He uh, caught a short ball and took it down to about the six-yard line. They went in and scored. So that was really kind of the deciding play in the game. But he's just a, he's a guy you have to know where he's at at all times. Uh, just a really elusive, uh, uh, really crafty player. And he's got good ability, certainly. And seemed like a great young guy on the field, a great competitor, certainly, on top of it. But, uh, yeah, we had an awful lot of respect for him going into the game and even more respect now after our ball game. 
Well, speaking of the Big Ten, before I let you go, it seems as if it's a big theme for the Giants because we talked about your player, Dane Belton, Wondell Robinson, who has ties to the Big Ten. And they also took Indiana linebacker Micah McFadden in the fifth round. And I know, obviously, you haven't necessarily gone up against Indiana every single year, but you did play them in the opener. And I'm curious what may have stood out to you about McFadden and what he could maybe bring the middle of that Giants defense as he continues to develop. Yeah, same thing as Rondell. I mean, it's it's when we were getting ready for uh, Indiana uh, during the off season, looking at him, um, you know, he jumped right out. He he was the the center of their defense, the leader, the heartbeat of their whole defensive football team, and uh, just played with great, you know, uh, aggressiveness, enthusiasm. Uh, and he he made things happen for him. Like he was a really disruptive guy. Uh, they took advantage of his. They blitzed him an awful lot. Uh, he's shooting up the a gaps a bunch and. And boy, if you didn't account for him, it was going to be problems. And that's we saw that film after film after film getting ready for him. So a lot of respect for him. I think that's a, you know, I'm not here to judge anybody's draft, but uh, that, that's a great player there, right? Certainly. And I thought you were bring up, bring up uh, Barkley, too. You might as well throw that one in there. Uh, I think <laughs> There's it was so many two, connections, yes. <laughs> I think it was 17 and uh, in Kinnick Stadium here. It might be as good a performance as I've ever witnessed live of a college football player. He was like Superman. I mean, we just could not. Could not stop him. Kick returns, you name it, he did it. Uh, catching the ball, running the ball, uh, about as good a good a you know good good a performance as I've ever witnessed live uh, from any college player. So it was just it was something to behold. And you know, so we're bringing up scar tissue here for me. I mean, that's just uh, my apologies on the fire. Well, the good news is, Coach, I'm bringing up all the players you don't have to deal with anymore. Exactly. I know you're not happy about Belton leaving, but everybody else you don't mind. I'm, the I'm big good time. with all that stuff. That's, that's, that's exactly right, Lance. Exactly. All right. Well, Coach, can't thank you enough. Greatly appreciate the time and the insight. Looking forward to following Dane Belton's career, and best of luck with your program moving forward. Appreciate that. Great to be with you. You as well. That is Iowa Hawkeyes head coach Kirk Ferentz here on the Giants Auto Podcast, which you can catch on Giants.com, the mobile app, and your favorite podcast platforms.